Hi everyone, Shabbat Shalom. I want to share with you uh, a quick thought on this week's Torah portion, Parshat Yitro, in which, of course, the Jewish people receive uh, the Torah, the Ten Commandments. The insight I'm going to share with you today, usually I like to come up with my own insight based upon other people's work, sort of uh, interplay and reaction to their thoughts, but today I'm just going to share with you an idea um, that I heard this week from Rabbi uh, Dr. Ari Berman, who's the president of Yeshiva University. It's such a, uh, a simple, beautiful idea that I just want to try to give it over as best I can. He offered it in a about a 45-minute class to our Midrashah. I'm going to try to give it over in five minutes, so I'm sure I won't give it justice, do it uh, proper justice, but I think you'll get at least the taste of, of the idea. Um, and it has to do with a famous Midrash. There is a famous teaching uh, that when the Jewish people received the Torah, when they received the, uh, the Ten Commandments, uh, the Midrash says that when they received it at Har Sinai, at Mount Sinai, uh, first God offered it to other nations of the world. God offered it, to example, uh, for example, to the descendants of Asaph. And they said, well, what's in it? What's in this Torah? And God says, well, it says that you are not allowed to murder. And they said, we don't want it then. Uh, that's, you know, our bread and butter quoting verses uh, from the book of Genesis in which it says that Esau and his descendants will live by the sword. And so they say, we can't, we can't deal with that command, so we don't want the Torah. And so God shops it around, as it were, to other people and comes to the descendants of Ammon and Moab and says, would you like this Torah? And they say, well, what's in it? And God then reveals something that's in it, this time having to do with the laws of sexual morality. And they say, wait a second. We were birthed into this world um, through sexual immorality. Remember, they are descendants of the of Lot and his daughters and daughters who engaged in incest with their father. And so they say, we can't accept the Torah either if that's going to be in the Torah. And God goes to other peoples and other uh, nations of the world, and each time they ask, well, what's in it? And God points out something that they do not want to uh, have to observe. And finally, God comes to the Jewish people and says, do you want the Torah? And they say, Naaseb and Nishma, they say, we will take it, we will hear it, we will accept it, and then we'll find out what's in it. Um, it's not simply a qua quantitative different response. Okay, we'll do whatever it is, even if it's hard to do the, the commandments, we're prepared to, to accept it. No, they say we accept it first, and then we will figure out what's in it. It's a, it's a totally different response. Um, they don't ask what's in it. They accept almost on... I don't want to say blind faith, because of course they have a, an existing relationship with God. God took them out of the land of Egypt. But the f blind faith is that they don't know 100% what's in, but they nevertheless accept it. And what Rabbi Berman points out is these two different types of responses are really two different types of how we have relationships uh, with people and uh, communities and entities in our lives. And if we understand the nature of these relationships, uh, we'll be a lot happier. And when we don't understand it, there is actually a cause for some dissatisfaction in our lives. And the two types of relationships that he describes are consumer relationship and covenantal relationship. Consumer relationship is fairly easy to understand. You can think about when you go out to buy something. You ask, well, what's in it? What is this that I'm buying? What is the price? What is the quality? How long is it going to last? What can it do for me? That's a consumer relationship. And in the consumer relationship, one's knowledge precedes one's commitment. You want to know about it first before you're going to commit to purchasing it. Um, because Rabbi Berman is the president of Yeshiva University, he, of course, brings an example from Yeshiva University. The business school there is named after Sai Sims, who was a famously well-known and successful businessman. And he used to have commercials in the New York area where he'd say, an educated consumer is our best consumer. And indeed, that's a sign of the consumer relationship. Get to know us, learn about us, learn the information, and then you'll be prepared to commit. And so therefore, knowledge precedes commitment in a consumer relationship. A covenantal relationship is different. First comes the commitment, and then comes the knowledge. First you jump, almost like a leap of faith. Rabbi Berman gave you the example of marriage as a covenantal relationship. It's something I certainly can relate to as well. People sometimes ask my wife, Rachel, you know, when did you know that in your process of uh, getting to know Ian, that he was the right person for you to marry? To which she usually responds, usually after the second year, I knew. 
or the third year, and that's being generous. The truth is she probably didn't really know I was the right person until five or ten years into her. I hope she knows now, but in any event, um, first comes the commitment. Again, it's not blind faith, right? There are inclinations, but there is a leap of faith that is required at some point in time. And so, therefore, the commitment comes first, and then the knowledge. C.S. Lewis, when he writes uh, in his book, uh, The Grief Observed, about the loss of his wife, how he reveals that he learned something new and more each day that they got to know each other. And he even learned things after she passed away. Right? The commitment comes first, and then there's an exciting journey of knowledge, of getting to know the person. And when there's a change that takes place, it's not something that disturbs you per se, but rather it's revealing something that was not previously known about the person and the depth of that person, as well as yourself and your relationship with that person. And then Rabbi Berman makes, I think, what is really an essential point. He says, both of these type of relationships are, are in and of themselves good and, and meaningful and, and important in our lives. It's important to have a consumer relationship sometimes, right? You want to buy a house. You want to uh, buy something that will improve the quality of your life. There's nothing wrong with trying to uh, acquire these type of things. They will add to your life. And certainly there's something, nothing wrong with a covenantal. In fact, something very positive to be able to have these deep, beautiful, meaningful relationships with other people, uh, with our faith communities, um, with other really meaningful type of entities in our lives. The problem comes when you don't keep them separate and when you confuse them. The example he offered uh, as a pulpit rabbi years ago, um, there were many people, singles, who were looking for spouses. And one of the things he noticed is sometimes that people, when they were searching, would confuse and they would think that they were trying to enter into a consumer relationship, right? Uh, what does this person have on their checklist? Do they meet my needs? Um, and it was almost as if they were thinking to buy something. They wanted to know more and more and more and more. And the problem with that is, first of all, they may never find the right person. But more than that, even when they think they found the right person, since the relationship entered in on the consumer level, years into the relationship, when there's a change or a bump in the road, and there's always going to be a bump in the road. So if the relationship is based upon a consumer relationship, well, now you're disappointed, right? I didn't get what I thought I was purchasing. And so therefore you may walk away or discard the item because it's not what you really wanted. It's not what you expected. But of course, the marriage is a covenantal relationship and the commitment has to proceed. And then you learn things and there might be challenges but you get through them because of the commitment that you have beforehand. It's not dependent uh, on, on everything always going totally smoothly and purely to your satisfaction. And so it causes a lot of, a lot of uh, pain and dissatisfaction when people confuse that and vice versa. You know, sometimes we have a covenantal relationship, which is wonderful when you have it with a person or community. But what happens when you apply it to something that really should be a consumer relationship. Let's say your house um, or your car. If you so fall in love with your car that it's a covenantal relationship or your home that it's a covenantal relationship, that it's who you are, it's part of your identity. Imagine the, the challenges and the dissatisfaction that that's going to lead to as well, that you hold on to it when you might be losing other more important relationships along the way or you overemphasize it and therefore you can't really see what's most important in your lives, and you have a distorted view. And so we learn from this Midrash that when it comes to something really meaningful, make sure that it's a covenantal relationship that you're building, which has different ramifications and also different methods of entering into that relationship. Those are the relationships we want to develop and we want to commit and then be excited about the learning process that follows. And it's okay for the consumer as well, but make sure that we keep the two separate. When we keep the two separate, we'll be able to live a much more happier and more meaningful life. Shabbat Shalom.